it's coming out. Oh, definitely. If it was any indication, then yes, he's probably coming back. But don't forget to sign up for our Labor Day special, and you can get this free t-shirt for the Nightmare on Smashville event happening in October. Yeah, it's going to be a very fun tournament. Um, I believe we got a bunch of people already signed up. We have look, trick or treat, Halloween costume, um, Halloween costume contest. So make sure to check it out. Free T-shirt, of course, to the first 50 entrants. And let's not forget about the after party at Not Scary Farm. If you've never been to Not Scary Farm, it is a lot of fun. There's people jumping out, uh, trying to scare people left and right. It is a once in a lifetime experience. It sounds like a very <laughs> Trollsy and fun experience for sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suggest visiting Camp Snoopy during that time. Okay, all right. <laughs> and it is a okay, and it is an LCQ spot for Summit Two, for Summit Ultimate Two. That's so right. that's also a very very big deal. And speaking of Summit qualifiers, the main one is going to be main stage here in SoCal. So make sure to come out to that if you want to try and qualify for Summit. I believe there's like four, four or five spots at main stage. That's right. And of course, uh, the run it back from event happening in Ohio. We haven't forgotten about you. I hope you haven't forgotten about us. And of course, Extra Life with yep. the Smash Out 2019. Yep. So make sure to check out all these great events coming to you guys in the future weekends to come, of course. Now we are ready. Kameme here at in winner side of grand finals and T in the loser side. That's right, the entire event has led up to this moment. It's finally time to find out which member of Team Japan is gonna be taking home the trophy. Is it going to be T with Pac-Man? Or the surprise pick of Wario coming out from Kameme? Or will it be Kameme with the fat man? Oh, Wait, isn't that what I said? <laughs> Did you say that? No, no. I didn't, I didn't say those exact words. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought you said Pac-Man and you didn't say Fat Man. And then I'm, I'm like, I tried to finish the statement. <laughs> Dang, Pac-Man, Fat Man, God. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, you you got to do it to him. You can't, you can't get them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, T looks very composed. He looks like he is very aware of the struggle that's coming his way because uh, this is, in fact, a run back. Yeah, this is the run back. Uh, T was up 2-0 versus Kameme. And I was just being, I, the whole time, I was just like, yeah, this matchup is pretty bad for Wario. And then Kameme <laughs> was like, actually, I'm sticking with Wario. And actually, I'm going to reverse 3-0 Kameme, or reverse 3-0 T. Um, I love the adjustments that we saw from Kameme. We saw a lot of out of shield half offs. Ver using, very, very clutch versus uh, T. Using the command grab to just nullify the bell. Yes, eating the bells with the neutral B. Uh, it was really, really great adjustment. Okay, and this is no button check. We are, in fact, in grand finals. Okay, now starting things off. Very meaty back air coming in for Kamehameha here. Whoever takes the lead is a very, very big deal in this matchup just because, oh man, look at, look at Wario just getting comboed by back air. That yeah, is a sight to able see, to bro. Heal up a little bit of that damage. We're getting two command grabs and putting a decent amount onto T along the way. Okay, forward air, very safe coming out from T. Very uh, nicely spaced, not drifting in. But ooh, that fair, not as safe. Trying to command a lot of area with the with the Galaga, but not going to get hit by that bike on stage though. That's right. Forward air, land it now. Uh, maybe he actually just ran center stage. He didn't care about T's position. He's like, I'm going over here. Yeah, oh, man, these back airs out of shield are doing so well for Kameme. Just when uh, T feels safe, ooh, man. I, I wonder if he could have wafted there. I mean, it we just got to the minute. Yeah, yeah, so we just got to the minute, but sometimes the small waft can kill. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it that one definitely looked like a stretch. Oh, okay, he got well, the bell, but. Yep, and again, T just not expecting for the bell to connect, but raw up smash. The scoops. Scooped them up for sure. The blue, the blue goes. Uh, one that we haven't really been seeing used from T that often. Yeah, uh, coming out. Okay, there's the up throw into the nair. Maybe T not going for the up air because he had rage or something of the sorts. Getting a little bit of charge. Oh, okay. We're gonna bring out another trampoline, but still gets back aired. Taking so much damage. Mm. Another forward air from the ledge. Another forward air, and the oh damage my. continues. Wow. He. I wonder. I think if, that was supposed to be an up throw. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say he probably wanted to throw it up there. But man, look at. These falling up air setups, man. Kamehameha already at 97%, but the back air will connect for him. That's right. Two stocks apiece, but with 96%, that's a good lead for T to hold on to. It's still going to be his uh, 
his momentum and really his play style that's what's going to dictate until Kameme is able to put a lot more damage on the T. What? what he was got that Yeah, he, he got the hit, but he gets the game follow up anyway, but maybe a little nerves coming in here for T. He got the bell and he just stared at him. Might have been expecting Shield Mode to come out. Just maybe one too many games with versus. <laughs> yeah, Kobe. I know, right? It's like just too many nightmares of Shield Art. Like, uh, is this is this real? Is this not real? What is real life, man? Okay, well, back air is gonna put T back on the ledge. Good up till. Oh good no, the that waft, sucks. Yeah, getting the sour spot. Very unfortunate. Yeah, he he wanted the base of the waft there, but he got the waft hit of the, like him traveling upward, and yeah, that is uh, especially like that with the sour is just not very strong. And now, I mean, just now the Waft being down, Anti being up two stocks to one, this is looking really rough for Kamehameha. But he hasn't taken too much damage here. So if he's able to buckle down, get the second stock, he won't be too far behind. Yo, he just kicked that strawberry. In the face. <laughs> get the strawberry out. It's my strawberry. Oh, there's a down air gimp. Yes, it is. He's able to make it back, of course, with the bike. Wario with a uh, very, very great recovery in terms of distance. Very unique as well, the way uh, he travels with the bike. Yeah, like, oh, I'm going to get on a bike and hop off of it. Like, that's my extra jump. And that, <laughs> that bike jump is really, really high. Oh, He's man. Utilizing the Alga against T. Yeah, come in. We got Galaga combos of his own, man. Man, down the last stock, and he did remember, this is without the Wasp confirmed. Like, Which actually should be coming up any second. I feel like... He's definitely already at half walk, and walk is approaching any second. Yeah, definitely a solid setup. Oh man, you gotta watch that smash attack though. The call out, no. He dri after the air dodge, he drifts back out. Really smart stuff from Kameme. Another nair out of shield. The bell getting sent off stage, chasing Kameme around, and the nair is going to land. Uh -huh. I wonder how Kameme will utilize the walk. Does he even need the walk at this point? Is he just using it for condition? These are all questions T needs to be aware of. Man, he's got to watch out. Oh, There's but the, the bell stumble. connects. Good stuff from T, and he's going to take this game number one versus uh, versus Kamehameha. I almost, say Gluto. I almost said Gluto because I saw Warrior on the screen. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Kamehameha showing that he is definitely a different breed of Wario. Um, Gluto and Kamehameha play Wario so different. It's like night yes. and day, actually. That's very true, but of course, sticking out with Pac-Man and Wario. Yeah, I don't see... I don't see Kamehameha switching off because he didn't switch off when he was down 0-2 in winter final. So I highly doubt it. He knows what he needs to do. He knows how, he, how to make this work. And honestly, we didn't really see him trying to eat much of the bells uh, in game one. Yeah, honestly, I mean, that, that was like the, the go-to. That was like one of the main reasons why he brought it back and was able to reverse 3 OT was because he was eating all those bells. Okay, well, double nair into back air. Okay, trying to get the up tilt, but T just patiently waiting. He knows Wario doesn't have anything too crazy to hit him on the ledge. Of course, he could poke the down tilt out, but doesn't really confirm off of anything when you get down tilt, get, get down tilted while hanging on the ledge. Right, it looked like the Hydrant actually kind of messed up the spacing for T, but it did push him back at a safe distance, so, you know, maybe he'll take that as well. It's, it's just so funny to me that T is, like, fishing for falling up air setups. Like, and it actually combos into stuff, so it's actually really good. But it just goes to show, and there it is. Yeah, There's the bike. Remember. Yep. Does not want to get hit by the bell, and he's doing it at a very, very great spacing here. And that's just like all the bonus fruit in general. Like he could throw a Galaga and eat it. Like oh. there it is again. Yeah. Look at very little lag on the uh, when he eats the bell as well. I mean, that's just plusing in Kamehameha's favor all around. He's gonna take a second off the the timer for Waz and gets a little bit of percent back and eliminates the bell. Those are all wins in Kamehameha's book. Oh wow! It doesn't. Okay. He punches the air dodge with the grab, but the hydrant kind of messing up the, the water at least. Looking for this back. The hydrant just keeps continuing to come into play, but down to dash attack, getting, uh, sending T straight up. Yeah, getting the sour spot on that dash attack. Oh man, that oh, I feel like he could have forward tilted if he reacted a little bit quicker, but that is very, very hard to do in these tense situations. But the parry into the up smash, Kameme finds a way to take this first stock. Now it's going to be a much different game than we saw in game two because with Kameme being in the lead, uh, T is the one that's going to be forced to approach. Okay, he has the full waft on deck here. And yeah, now that he can chill and just rack up this damage, he has the rage to back it up. Honestly, War at 125%. This character is very heavy. As long as he doesn't get hit by the bell, he'll be living for quite some time. And just, as I say, 
he gets the belt. I mean, that's just the Nair's looking, working against him. We saw it a little bit earlier in the day. You were talking about how Rising Nair uh, is not a good tool, really, for Warrior to be using. Yeah, at, uh, at very low percent. At very low percent. Which T is that? Yeah, yeah. Som um, sometimes it'll actually, most of the time, it'll actually be negative on hit. Um, I've seen uh, some Warriors like Tweak, they'll actually, at 0%, instead of going for like Rising Nair, they'll go to like, oh, and there's the Waff confirmed. Center stage, doesn't matter. Full Waff, very, very strong in the up tilt into the Waff. It didn't matter which way he died on that one, because it, since he was dead center stage. Exactly. Galaga is able to connect, but not, but T not able to follow up. Not in the correct position, but up throw into a single up air. Oh, get clapped. Oh, yeah, and knowing that he's going to go for the shield right on the platform, gets the chomp on as well. But yeah, earlier I was talking about um, Tweak does, uh, he'll alternate um, how he nares. So he'll, like, come, he'll fall down and just hit nair one at 0%, and then nair one, falling nair one into, like, nair one two, rising nair one two will connect at, like, the lower percent. Okay, forward air does connect. So surprising that that up tilt doesn't reach the Pokemon platform. Dude, I'm still mind, I'm still mind blown that Kamehameha plays this matchup so so well. So, so crazy to me. <laughs> oh, I think Kamehameha was uh, or T was trying to bait Kamehameha into trying to eat it because he immediately grabbed it and threw it down. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be some of the mix-ups, right? T can force him to go into the Chomp and maybe reposition himself and throw the uh, the bell in a different way where Chomp won't get him. Okay, okay. The Chomp does come out, throwing T right off stage. Okay, showing the Chomp, backing up, gets the back air catching. T overextending out of the corner. He, he feels like he has to fight his way out. Okay, the bell's online, though. Kameme definitely respecting it here. And there it does connect, but the bell is gone. Really, he needed that bell because guess what? We got a half waft out of shield. Yep, there you go. And that's going to take the stock. And we, the two things that we pointed out that uh, pretty much made it a possibility for Kameme to get the reverse three on T were the wafts out of shield and eating the bells. And he definitely did it in that match, and he definitely two stock T right there. Well, let's see if he continues that trend. T was able to adjust and really set up. Um, uh, he had a couple setups to deal with, like, Kamehame eating the bell. I want to see if he's going to utilize it now or maybe wait an additional game before bringing it back out. Yeah. We'll see if he uh, gets some kind of a um, little bit more bell mix-ups, but we're going to run it back here straight to Pokemon Stadium 2, game number three. Okay. Pokemon Stadium, which is actually kind of interesting because when it was T's counter pick last time they played, final, they went to final. final destination. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, Kamehame has been watching this whole time, and he's seen how comfortable T is on final and how many people, like, T counterpicked to final destination. Like, I think at that point it's just like, all right, you know what? Like, I'm banning final. <laughs> yeah, get it out of here. I'm not dealing with this. You, you have two bans. Um, the, the SoCal rule set, or just the California rule set, is uh, five five starters, one counter pick, two bans, no DSR. So, you, you got two bans. Yeah, make good use for Okay, my forward air does land onto that fire hydrant, and that's the approach that we saw T utilizing in the winner's side, where you want to break the fire hydrant with the bell because it's not going to allow uh, Kamehameha to eat it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I love how the Galaga, even if you Z drop it, it still makes the sound. That's just like funny to me. <laughs> It's just <laughs> coming in, and it's like not even twirling. But I mean, time and time again, we've seen Galaga be such an important tool for T. Not only do you just combo off of it, it just controls a lot of area. You know, since it twirls around, like that's just airspace you're controlling, and you can move freely while it's doing that. You know, what I mean, this is very, very great setup tool. Very true. And back air onto the shield, and another back air onto T. Can T hold on to this first stock? Kameme at 63%, but honestly, not that's not that much percent for for Wario at least, just because of how heavy he is. Mm -hmm. Sliding F silver, ooh, baiting that bell. That bell is the bane of Kameme's existence. Oh yeah, he's he's gotten F smashed many many times. Wow, we're going deep for this edge guard. We're gonna keep it going though. F tilt? Oh. Okay, no F tilt. Yeah, maybe he thought he was just gonna snap onto the ledge there. Ooh, really good stuff. And we, we've seen T have the trampoline set up by the roll area, and he just keeps, like, ledge rolling onto it, right? Because you get a hitbox when you come up from that T. Oh, again, look at the mix-ups. He's not throwing the bell at him, throws it away, gets it in his hand, so and then comes back in and throws him right at his face where he least expects it. That's true. I mean, typically, he has been trying to space it out so it lands on Kamehameha, but now he seems to be taking the, the Kome approach where he's just doing it in his face. 
And now look at this, T up three stocks to one here. But the walk is online, so if Kamei is able to just get a solid back air, a solid kill move here, looking for the forward tilt, looking for the dash attack, but none of these are finding his mark. Even the dash attack flanking with the fire hydrant isn't a good look for Kamehameha. This could be it. Oh, no. I mean, oh, the bike can't kill, but it has to be very close to the leg. If they had the assist from the hydrant, it probably would have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. He, I, dude, he definitely looked like he called that ledge roll, but the back air will connect anyway. And now T is uh, in danger of really losing his stock fairly quickly. Okay. Pull off E online. Ooh, I love the down tilt. That was very, very good. And. <laughs> yep, he, he's definitely looking for this Waff confirmed. Going high with the bike. Oh, Ooh, I, I thought that was it. Yeah, I definitely felt like the Waft could have connected there, but maybe Kamehameha didn't want to pull the trigger. Going for a hard read instead. Okay, well, eating the bike, gaining a little bit more damage, and let's start the timer on that Waft once again. Yep. Was used it around a minute 40 seconds. Tried to get the trump, but great stuff from T. Getting right back on stage and trying to throw the bell down, trying to get that normal get up. The bell's back online. Oh, wow, the, the water actually moving that neutral so it didn't fully connect there for Kameme. Yeah, expecting an offensive approach from Kameme as T throws out the S-match and now takes me back to the stage. Ooh, that was so smart. Yeah, he had pressuring the, the shield with the bell. Yeah, and then as the bell's falling, he just directional air dodges through him. If it hits, he has enough time to go ahead and get the forward smash. And oh, the patience coming out from both yeah, of them. Yeah, both of them just looked at each other like, you got that bell, though. He's just <laughs> like, yeah, I got that bell. <laughs> I don't know about that, though. Well, <laughs> your problem. <laughs> uh, I got two stocks, bro. <laughs> and at 170, oh, that man. strawberry was sure was enough to actually take the stock, but forcing Kamehameha to recover low, allow T to get the down air. Now up 2-1 here versus Kamehameha, the man who put him in losers. T has clawed his way back through the losers bracket, and he wants the run back. He was like, I was up 2-0. I had you, bro. I had you. But T has been in this position before, and we saw Kamehameha able to turn the tables. Can he do it again, or are we going to see a bracket reset? Yeah, this, I mean, it, it's looking like it, man. T, like, like we said, uh, we saw the neutral be, like, just Kamehameha eating these bells, right? But now T is mixing up how he's throwing his bells, where he's throwing his bells, so making it a lot harder. Oh, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of thoughts going through T's mind right now as he uh, makes camp on the ledge. Oh, there's that reset after the up throw up air falls back onto the ground, resets, goes for the up tilt, and just keeps the combo going. And slapping the fire hydrant towards T, getting both hits in there into a back air. Oh, yep, there's that low nair as well. But trying to set up this Galaga, and T wants some low percent combos of his own, but Mame is not giving it to him. Up tilt going to whip. Oh, wow, such a great repositioning and coming back down with the back air, knowing exactly where T wants to stretch out with these hip boxes. Right, another Nair trading in Kamehameha's favor, putting 90% onto T. Yeah, T definitely, I and mean, that's something you never want. Oh, wow, that wall jump is very good. Whoa. Then he even started boxing his shield just in case uh, Kamehameha was feeling a little brave. Yeah, yeah, that was a very, very good recovery. Ooh, and there's the grab, and it's so scary if Wario takes the first stock and he has walls like that in itself is just a very thought, scary Ooh. thought here. Whoa, the melon just gets shot out by the water. T going to recover low and getting right back up on that ledge, rolling away from Kameme as he tries to set up his trap. But now the Galaga is in Kameme's hands. Nice catch with the uh, with Wario there. Oh, crossing him up way too far. Not going to be able to get that up smash out of shield. Now T on the ropes here, 155% off stage. He's been trying to use the command grab, expecting to get up. Uh, instead of eating it, just takes it and makes great use of it. And there's the clap right off the top. He had a lot of options there and how he could have killed him, but it looks like he's going to go with the up air. You, you, you can see like his mind processing it too, like, mm, which one do I do? Do I do uh, back bear, uh, clap. <laughs> yeah, and that time he caught the uh, bell with the neutral air, and he didn't opt to go for the uh, the neutral B, and he, if he ate that bell, he wouldn't have got the stock there. He actually reversed him with the bell, so it was very good that Kamehameha actually was down to catch that with an air, which is scary because sometimes you can just mess that up and then get stunned. Yeah, he was very high up too, so... Even being at like that percent, up smash wasn't going to read. Really, T could only really go for a back air, which I'm pretty sure wouldn't have killed in that position. But covering the approach of the bell with the fire hydrant, the tool that uh, T has slowly been utilizing throughout this set and the previous one. Mame still has three stocks, and he has the full wall test. Literally, as the word is coming out of my mouth, Kameme brings it out. 
gets the hard read and reacts very, very well. Man, he's up three stocks to one now on T. That's true, but as you can see, Kameme starting to utilize the belt against T. But a big F smash is going to land, and that's going to be the first stock. Still two to go. And we see double clap on the T. Oh, with the double kicks coming out. Ooh, oh, oh, oh! Okay, does he have the bike? No. no. He, that what? was the quickest stock I've seen. Dude, this Pac-Man goes in, bro. The bike was all the way to the left, and what a string. After the Hydrant, he just goes for the dare, right? After catches the jump, and that's a dead Wario. And if you're killing Wario sub 50%, that is insane value. And the WAF just got used. I was just explaining how incredibly crazy, like, bad the situation was, right? And then T's just like, actually, let me just, like, whip this combo up real quick. Nice little edge guard for the cherry on top, and that's a wrap. I'm back up to even. Making plays and showing just exactly what he's made of. Throwing out the apple and getting it, continuing the rack of the damage. Going from being three to one stocks to having an even game. Dude, and I just feel like it's because T is starting to become more aggressive. Like all of a sudden, on that last stock, it's just like, actually, let me just go in super hard. <laughs> There's that dashing that I was talking about earlier. Like, he just mixes up his oh, animation. Whoa! Okay, but he has the bell. Wait for the bounce. Okay. okay. Definitely not going to get tripped up by that. See what you have on the platform there? Yeah, popped him once, and that's all I needed. Get back <laughs> on the ground. We're not done. Oh, man. There's the down air. This is so, so close. Half Wap is going to be coming up pretty soon here for Kameme. That is going to be an out of shield option. That is going to be something he has to respect. And of course, you know, we saw how just how uh, well oh, Kameme man. can utilize the Waft out of shield, but forward air does connect. Both these players being at a high percent stuff. A Waft out of shield is going to clutch it out. Yeah, and Kameme is going to seal the deal on that game. It was looking scary, though. Korean. Like, he he had that. The Korean. Like, what? This is game five. This is game five. What happened last time it was game five? The last time it was game five, Kameme was the one that came out on top. So we'll see who, who is more clutch. Who, who, who can clutch it out? T almost clutched it out that game four. He was so, so close. He was so close to clutching it out. But Kameme came back, walked out of shield. Right. And T is stretching a little too hard with that forward smash, man. Yeah, it was just that aggression that started to come out. He really but was I mean, working in his favor. He was able to take a stock yeah. very early on the Kameme. But just in that scenario was not the play. Well, it's just it, it's hard to knock him for it because the reason why he made that comeback was because of his aggression. Exactly. So it's like I can't I can't blame wait him. Wait a minute. Okay, but he has the bike this time. Oh man, you know that T wanted to do like some kind of ledge drop aerial, but man. Kameme able to make his way back on the stage. Did not want the same thing that happened to him that last game. That's right. And throwing out a lot of forward as we're saying a much more aggressive Pac-Man that we have pretty much all day. Okay. That's the play here. Just going to ledge drop. And pretty much on Pokemon Stadium 2 this entire set, I feel. So we're going to set up the Hydrant at the very edge here. And look at all these aerials coming out from both of these players. Okay, clapping. Just getting a single clap. Okay, he's going to start up the bonus fruit a little bit more. Gets the key here. Where are we going to set up the hydrant, though? And we're getting a single first in air, but getting the command grab after and forward air. Keeping T at the ledge. I love how uh, that's Kamehame, the second jump. Yeah. Oh, but there is the key. Kamehame utilizing that uh, platform right there, moving back and forth, and he slaps him right in the face with the forward tilt. He's going to take the first stock here, game five. Such an explosion from both players. It's really hard to tell who was a. Uh, Bro, just from the animations, I thought, I thought that was a walk. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the half walk is up. But, or you think he used it? I, it sounded like he used it. Oh, damn. I, I didn't see that, but that, that would be tragic. Oh, but there's the bell. And speaking of tragedies, man, getting hit up by that bell right into the forward smash, that is a definitely a tragic. Wow, what was that? Getting grabbed through the hydrant. And then getting hit by the hydrant. Like, what? Okay, utilizing that uh, the water to push. Push him into... Trying to get some kind of grab started here, trying to, and like it, it's just, it's so cool that Pac-Man now has a grab combo earlier percent, something that you you can, you gotta watch out for the gala, you gotta watch out for the grab if these early percents against Pac-Man. Okay, jumping off stage and taking the time to utilize, but there's the full walk that we're just making great use of that, putting T on what could possibly be his final stock. Yeah, and that's the scary thing against uh, uh, when you're fighting up against Wario. If you're not up early on, he can just like pivot the whole match just off the waff and whoa, that like bounced off his shield and it was still active. Very, very yeah. tricky stuff coming out from T. Yeah, wonky angle with the Galaga. Now being back to these lead traps with Kameme getting the command grab. Very smart. Okay. Kameme with the forward air. Closing in. Tech. 
Gets the double jump here. Where's the side B going? Straight to the ledge. Tries to two frame him with the forward tilt, but doesn't go off. And of course, you know, being a full stock ahead, you're allowed to take those type of risks. But Nair, getting the trade, that trade gonna go in commitment's favor. Yeah, but I mean, if you're if you're commitment at this point, you don't really have to take risks. You you wait till your half walks up, and then you can pretty. M oh no! Oh. He tried to avoid the bonus fruit, but was not quite there. Now we're in trouble. Now we're last stock. Yeah, we are last stock, but. Just think about the advantage that Kamehameha has. He's at low percent. Yes, we saw a stock get evaporated uh, in last game, but drop down back air. And yep, there it is. He will take it over T. Kameme not dropping a single set here at Switchfest 2019. Both players hugging it out. Great stuff to Team Japan, man. They came out. They obliter obliterated everyone. They were top four. Good stuff to them, man. And we got to see so many unique character matchups and both, like all four of them just playing their hearts out. That's right, especially T, you know, he did such a phenomenal job here. Just not over, just not able to upward 